Hey, and welcome to another episode of Making the Right Play. I'm your host, Ishii, with my co-host, Manit. Today, we have another special guest. We have Danish Ahmed. How are you doing, Danish? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Okay. Happy 2021. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, happy yeah. New Year's. Yeah, First happy New Year. New Year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I, I just I just introduced like uh, Danish to Ishida just because like uh, you guys haven't really like met and like spoken for a long time. So I actually met uh, Danish at like a coffee shop when I was working uh, in like the Toronto, like the GTA area. Um, and so, so it, it was interesting, like I, I was just there all the time and I saw like Danish all the time and we just ended up sitting at the same table and we just started like chatting and he, he, he was like kind of curious on what I was working on at the one thing led to another and then we just started beating every week kind of thing. Um, yeah. but yeah, that, that, that was cool. And I think, uh, initially like I, I saw him work on like a bunch of things, like all the way from like his writing work, his filming work to, you know, the, like I, I was very curious on like what, what he was doing on the end of like PR and whatnot. Cause, uh. He, he, like I, I think you were doing like multiple jobs at the same time. You were t- doing a lot of like freelance gigs, and I, I felt like yeah. you know Balancing you, you had a yeah, and you, you, I, I felt like you you had your hand in like a lot of things, and I, and that, that was just very always very interesting to me uh, because you know, uh, and I also got my articles and stuff reviewed through him, so that, that was very nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah that's that's just a small kind of introduction to him. Um, but yeah, uh, like. Uh, Danish, like, how, how are you doing? Like, and what are you working on these days? Like, I, I know you founded like PRM recently, but uh, how how's all that going? Well, so lately I've been moving more into um, the ad space, uh, working on a few ads, still going back to writing a few more scripts, and yeah, uh, yep, still working in PR, mostly freelance, and I'm currently working with the government as well in uh, Service Canada. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, cool, cool, cool. so could you could you like maybe like. I know that I've been like kind of unclear on like what the basis of PR is and like you know where it comes into play. But could you like kind of give us like an abridged version of what PR is and uh, just like uh, the role it has I mean, yeah, like, like, in our industry or you know as a whole? Well, in a straightforward way, I think it's just uh, figuring out what like an organization wants to say, saying it in a way that the audience that needs to hear it can hear it, and then finding the audience that needs to hear it. So it's like you know whenever you have a product or service. Who, who does it benefit, you know, who should know about it, and then who should know why they should have it, like that kind of thing. No, it's really just bridging that uh, communication gap. Yeah. So I guess so you'd be like the middleman between like the audience and, you know, the presenter, uh, essentially. Yeah. And you, yeah, yeah, you're picking, you know, you're finding out where to disseminate it, who to disseminate it to, and like how to Like it. a... Yes, yeah. A translator, but also like a storyteller, because you got to... Uh, there is a certain kind of persona an organization wants to give out, Mm-hmm. And communications are what keeps it aligned from beginning to end. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, I, I was just curious as to what like, the opportunity scope is like in, uh, you know, North American like countries uh, for like the industry of PR. Like, I, I know, I feel like you'd have a decent amount of insight to that, like seeing that, you know, you, you have your mentorship kind of like platform for the industry. Uh, well, I, I think the traditional route is very tough because, uh, there are always way more graduates that come out every year than there yeah. are job postings, especially for entry level. But right. um, when, but in the freelancing side though, like anyone who can go up to a business and just say, you know, I think this, there's this work that needs to be done either on the social or digital channels. And then you offer that service. There's a lot of opportunity there for that. Like the untraditional way, there's a lot there, but the traditional way, it's a little um, it's saturated. Okay. Okay. So like the entrepreneurial types probably will thrive, you know, like the, the ones who are like, who would be up to like running a business or something, right. it's a great place for them. But like, you know, get, get the degree, get the diploma, get out and get a job. That'd probably be a little tougher. A little tougher. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so like the, be- yeah, the best way to kind of break in is to like do a lot of like freelance gigs and just like, um, I guess take a very unconventional route, like, like because uh, what we do generally, like at least what I do, is just like I keep applying for internships and stuff, and just like yeah. moving up. But I guess it's kind of different in in this industry. Well, but it's because of the communication side, like if you you're qualified right now to go to an organization, see what they're good at, and then you see that it's not being expressed in the communications, then yeah. offer that. You know, if if okay. you go up to like a video game company and say like, uh, you know, I'm noticing that literally everyone at McGill loves this game. You know, why yeah. don't we move the move the communications more towards the McGill audience? Yeah. And it'll blow up. You can do that right now. 
see, but that requires that you don't look for a, an agency or a workplace that will enable you to do it. You just got to go out and do it. That's what that's for. Yeah. Interesting. So I guess it's like a lot of like cold calls and, you know, like if you're going to, uh, go on, go about it that way because like you said there's no agency there's no nobody to give you like direction there well yeah. cold calls wouldn't really work though because it's like calling like what 100 names in a day or something this would just yeah. be like one call specifically for the one that needs to hear oh, yeah, yeah, yeah but uh, it's a cold call in the sense that you like, have no affiliation beforehand you have no like familiarization you just work you know you look at the work and then you like identify a gap and you present it to them and it may or may not work right. yeah yeah fair enough but like usually it works because <laughs> yeah 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 fair enough yeah yeah so like, I, I guess like, did you, do you find yourself more on the traditional part or are you in the more untraditional kind of route to it? Non-traditional? No. Well, yeah, cause I come from film, so I don't think it's traditional at all. Like it's more, I mean, I came to PR more because I realized that uh, there's a huge potential now in crossover between like arts and business. You know, nowadays for any product or service you're looking for, there's a hundred organizations that sell it, right? So what differentiates okay. them? Like what makes you choose one over the other? It's like what it says about the world and self and its audience. Like, you know, people prefer like Nike over Under Armour or um, Adidas because of their branding. Uh, like quality yeah. and everything is consistent across. So that's where I realized that there's a real potential here for artists, like filmmakers who create and make audiences feel about the narratives they set up. Now imagine feeling that same way about brands. Like, you know, if you think about, like what's one of your favorite movies? Interstellar. Interstellar? Well, Chris yeah. Nolan, yeah, right on, okay. Um, imagine feeling like that sense of, uh, like wonder and, uh, like, what was it like love at the end, right? Mm -hmm. But associating, associating that with, um, like NASA, that would make you loyal. Like imagine if there's like a hundred space companies, then NASA would stand out because of the interstellar like story, right? That'd be the Nike. So it's that storytelling aspect that really drew me in. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be it. I guess you said, you said like you had a. Uh, history with film right and like i guess like that carries over but you want to talk about your time in film and studying it and uh you know what it, what it was like well film wasn't something i studied i studied english language and literature a western okay, okay. Cool. and um then like i was writing short stories at first but then i realized my style was more suited to like uh, uh to scripts because it's all visual details and then i don't know it just how do you describe the storytelling process <laughs> Do you, do you guys like, huh? I, I mean, I, I'd imagine it's a, a tremendous process that you can't do justice to in the span yeah, of yeah, yeah. the podcast. Yeah. 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 Like, I, yeah, I don't do any storytelling myself, but uh, I guess like, you know, from, from the minute experience I have, you know, in like random English writing classes in college, I think, yeah. There's Did a, you enjoy those classes? Yeah, I do. I do. Actually, I love the, the, I've been, I think I've taken a couple of creative writing classes at Stanford and it's been you know it's been evolved like honestly like the whole like process of like developing a piece of writing like instead of you know you're not you're not writing out you're not creating content in mass you're, you know you work with one piece and you refine it over and over and over again and it's just it's a very like interesting way of like going about like creating really because you know it feel it feels almost like carpentry in a way because you're like whittling down a piece of wood right and you're just yeah, getting yeah. the very fine point of it and it, it is interesting but yeah well i think like, like to me, it's just hilarious because like film is the one space, you know how everyone nowadays is constantly talking about the word content. Yeah. Yeah. And that just literally means more stuff. Yep. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the only yeah. context in which it wouldn't allow, wouldn't exist is like a film. Like you went to a filmmaker and said like, are you making more content? <laughs> <No>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But right. YouTubers see that that's where the overlap is. That's where it's funny. Cause there's like YouTubers and like these um, social platform uh, video creators, like they're in that yeah. little gap, like they're, both trying to tell stories and like trying to um, create content, you know? So that's a, uh, but like a filmmaker, like, no, that's yeah. <laughs> imagine like casting Christopher Nolan, when is your next piece of content coming out? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you could say that about James Cameron. I mean, the guy, you know, he's shooting Avatar two, three and four at the same time. But yeah. that was his life dream. You know, he wanted that since he was 19, in 1970, he drew the trees for Avatar in the 1970s. Right. And his entire purpose for being in film is to build out those five. He's happy to die for those films. That's really? it. That's his life goal. That's interesting. Because like I, you know, I, I heard that he was gonna do like two, three, and four at the same time, and I was like, this is gonna be a failure. But like, you know, all props to him. Well, because right. there's just a long story he wants to tell. He doesn't know how much time he needs it, so he keeps going up and down. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But yeah, how did how did you go from film to uh, PR? How, well, how was that like? I mean, the film thing is interesting because uh, every like creator i think 
wants their content to be talked about or like the portfolio to be talked about on its own merit, right? Mm. Rather than like going out and pushing it saying like, uh, check this out. And then you wonder if you, if it's good because you're good at marketing or is because the content is actually good, right? But then, so I was looking at PR as a way to kind of see, is there like a balance where you can, um, you know, authentically promote to the ones who would enjoy it rather than just trying to push it out as much as possible and then getting the number following, you know? And yeah, I think like uh, that's where the shift came because it self-promotion is one of the hardest things that artists struggle with because, uh, you know, it, it's got to be for the art. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think we were on the thread of like, you know, how you, how you got into, uh, into PR and, uh, you, you have your own, uh, you know, PR mentorship, uh, program, right. And, uh, do you want to just tell us about PR app and like what it's doing and like, you know, what, what the work it's, you know, what it's like being part of that? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, PR app, because I noticed that when I was in the field, you know, well, especially this is where my film experience came into my PR experience in film. If you ever want to, um, like do anything, you just got to go and talk to people and figure out someone else who's trying to do the same thing. And then that's what like networking was, you know, making friends in the industry. Right. And then when PR came around, I like, I brought that same kind of mentality and I was just talking to a lot of people in the field because that's how I understood the field. And then as a lot of students and grads were also getting value from that process. So there was no framework that made that easy. So there's no, like events are fine, but you have like 30 people and like you're a newcomer to the field and you got to figure out how you can sell yourself so that they think their time is worth you know, spending on you, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas another one-on-one, -on -one, you have an organic conversation and it can be about anything and anywhere. And there's a, there's a lot less pressure in that conversation, right? Yep. So then um, that's where I had this idea of like creating this platform where students could connect to graduate to uh, professionals in the field and just have an open conversation about anything, whether it's concerns professionally or, uh, you know, like if they are worried about like work-life balance, things like that, or what skills are needed, you know, just like, and completely open-ended. Like all of our events are actually open-ended. There's no uh, set format. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess like yeah, mentorship is such a, it's a huge aspect, especially in like, you know, when you go into industry, like, you know, a, a lot of, I feel like a lot of people that come from like STEM fields, and end up in industry don't have that mentorship aspect, especially in like a business environment, and you know it hurts them uh, all the more. Uh, but yeah, that's that's awesome that you know you're getting you're giving the chance to, for students to connect with you know industry professionals and just understand what the industry is like. And you know, well, it's the uh, yeah. well, I think the real mentorship though isn't um, like professional development. It's mm -hmm. I've made some great friends where it's like if I have like memes about the field to share. Like I'll send it to them, you know, and like that's where like that's what I do with my mentors. And like sometimes if I like feel like I'm stressed out about the work, I can just call them up and ask them, you know, it's like how like have the sounding board for that. I think like the, the mentorship problem, the mentorship aspect doesn't work as well when uh, people go in thinking this is like professional development time and I need yeah. to get as much value out of it, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 And uh, I I was just like uh, interested on like what what what. What are the general tips you kind of give someone to kind of like break into uh, like, you know, PR and like film and writing and, and things like that, and, you know, things that they could do in college or like things that, you know, they, they could work on on their own, like what, but like a general framework of like what, what people could kind of like consider? Um, the simplest one is just um, find people who are doing things you like doing and try to talk to them, like in no matter yeah. where you are. And it's, People are surprised at how easily you can talk to some of the brightest minds out there. You know, all it takes is like sending a message or even yeah. sitting down in a coffee shop next to them and asking them what they're working on. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, then, yeah. and like this all came about because of it. And just curiosity, like be curious, you know, if there's someone who is doing something interesting or you're just curious about, go up and ask and like say, well, well what is that? And if they don't respond, then now you know. If they do respond, you, 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 you'd be on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think for the, for the last um, for like a last segment, this is something that I was uh, kind of like wanted to ask you was that you know I, I know you had a, a bit of like struggle kind of like like you know especially like in like the whole brown culture situation where like you know you like you know people might not feel like as comfortable getting into things like the arts, um, and I know you're very like huge like you stand by that like a lot. And so would you, what, what kind of advice would you give someone to kind of like, who wants to break into the arts or like who wants to study like English or uh, philosophy or like subjects like that as to how, whether that, whether it's like 
whether it's worth it a and like b as to how they could kind of deal with the doubt the own the self doubt that they kind of have with the entire process yeah yeah i mean what with film the interesting thing is because there isn't as big a representation right yeah all the artists of today that are like our people of color they're basically pioneers right they get to define that entire niche of the industry right and that should be seen as more of an opportunity than an obstacle you know yeah, like those kind of stories don't exist and you get to be the one defining the standard for them as they come up see like that that's usually how i dealt with it because there are like i still don't think like there are so many um stories that could be told that aren't being told like even now when we see uh stories from other populations it's still primarily like the hollywood story told with that population you know yeah. like yeah. like the originality is still is lacking so there's an opportunity because of it like if if there were like if we were in an age where like we had 200 years of like full representation then you'd be fighting against the standards that have already been set but there have been no standards you know like now now is the time if there's someone who wants to go into film go into pr go into any of those they naturally have a perspective that hasn't existed you know there, there, it's a time that's to capitalize true. on the advantage yeah so that's it that's it okay that's it's, that's, think, that's, good yeah, that's, that's actually a unique way of thinking about it because I never thought about it. You know, it, it, I think it's pretty obvious when you look at it, feel like, you know, the, the people of color right now in it are actually defining the genre, but I never thought of it as an opportunity for people going into so. And, you know, yeah. That's very, yeah, that's that's a really obvious thing to think now that I think about it. Like, they, they really yeah. are, like, you know, defining what it is and, you know, they, they get to play, they really get to play with God with it. Yeah, well, I, I hopefully, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know they seem to be doing amazing work so far so yeah, yeah. yeah there's some fun stuff coming here we have one question that we ask all our guests okay and, uh, okay if you could pick anybody in the world and embody their power power of being defined however you like it who would it be and why uh can they be fictional yep fictional yeah. dead live whatever hmm <laughs> Diogenes. What you say? Diogenes. Oh, beautiful. Great Do you know answer. him? Yeah, god of wine, right? Da, no, that Di- that's Dionysus. I uh, No, Diogenes was this uh was the original skeptic and uh, he's a little story. So Oh, right. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah I think on. I told you about it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I was kind of the great thought he was such a smart philosopher so he wanted to go out and give him a little present. So he went up to him and Diogenes was living in a bathtub in the middle of a street in Athens. and then alexander comes up and he says you know it's like if there's anything in my power that i can grant you ask it and i'll give it to you and then diogenes just raises his head and says uh, yes uh, can you please move you're blocking the sun and then alexander just thought he's even more wiser because of it and like that. <laughs> he just lived like yeah. that you know he just he just went out pointing out like nonsense everywhere and uh, that was his life yeah. okay that's an interesting yeah. answer yeah i like that yeah it's yeah. interesting But yeah, I think that concludes this episode of uh, Manus yeah. got to answer it too. I want to hear Manus answer to that. Oh, Manus, no, you guys don't do it till the end of the season. I'm sorry, the host don't do it till the end of the season. You you hear oh. it in time. Yeah. Okay. We, All right. But I, but I let you know what I said. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh yeah, thank you for coming on uh Danish. Uh I hope this was good. I don't know. I feel like I was a strange guest. No, no, it was no, awesome. No, no. Uh, and, uh, I like and uh, I think uh, all of you who you know make it to this point, uh, I will enjoy it as well. I think you had some uh, uh, some good insights on this, and I think there's we have a decent amount of like creatives among our audience, and you know they're gonna enjoy it. All oh, right, on. Okay, also. Yes. The fun talk, though. Yeah, it's good meeting you sure. too, Ayushra. Let sure. me know if you're in Toronto. That'd be cool. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, sure. All right, all right. right. Take it out. We'll see the viewers on the next episode of Making the Right Play. All right. and cut. Thanks for listening to another episode of Making the Right Play. You can find our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Anchor. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, Content. This will keep you posted on new episodes, bonus content, and blooper reels. We hope you make the right play.